<laughs> Hello, I'm J.D. Martin. And my name is Jan Garrett. We're going to do a song for you called And Together. <laughs> through the shadow underneath the past sifting through the vast devastation through the unrelenting sorrow I can feel you in my heart remembering our last conversation be brave have faith you said and don't lose your courage and together we can weather and madness And together through the heavy stars Through the darkness, through the storm We'll find the passage And together we will Reverend Debbie, would you unmute, please? What I was saying such wonderful things. Perhaps you could all intuit exactly what that was because we're very advanced. 
Good morning and welcome to the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. We are so glad you're here. Whether you are watching us on YouTube or you are joining us live on Zoom, we are delighted to see you. You probably got a pop-up that reminds you that this service is being recorded and you are welcome <clears throat> to change your name or just use your first name as I have or to even shut off your video. You can find us on Meetup, Facebook, Instagram, and again on YouTube. The best place is to check out our website. It is kept current, it is live and beautiful, and has all of the events that are going on here at the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. We welcome you to connect to our YouTube channel. I mentioned our website. First, you would go to saccsl.org. Now, saccsl, you can remember that, SAC for Sacramento, CSL for Centers for Spiritual Living. We are the Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. Come to saccsl.org. And from there, you can click on our YouTube link. And when you're on our YouTube channel, you can subscribe. And we ask that you do that so that we grow our viewership. And those of you who are on YouTube, thank you so much for your abundant donations that enable us to support continuing to offer this via social media. And so as, I, as we welcome each other today, please unmute and greet each other. Good morning from Connie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. Sunday service. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The divine in me sees the divine in you. I love you all. Namaste. Good morning. Good morning. Namaste. And now, if you would mute yourselves again, please. And I would like to introduce both our practitioner of the day and our resident world, world quality resident house poet, Doug Van Workum. Doug performs with us regularly. He is a deep thinker and philosopher who composes his own poetry and also performs the poetry of metaphysical poets like Rumi and Hafiz. And I'm so looking forward to being deepened by that expression of love, heart, and philosophy this morning. In addition, we have our practitioner of the day. One of our resident practitioners, Margie Lookfeld, is a deep spiritual thinker, an incredible practitioner, and an incredible heart. Please connect with Margie as she leads us in our invocation. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Reverend Debbie. And uh, good morning. And as we take this morning in with the divine presence, I know that I am truly one with this presence. As I am one with this love of all, every day permeates in everything and everyone. And as I know this for me, I know this for each and every one of us here and, and around the world. So I bless our service today for I know, I know that we will get a great message and we will go further together and grow. And so, and so we bless it together, and so it is. And now, please enjoy, join me in enjoying our readings. If we do not merge with others in cooperation, in unity, and in happiness, we may be certain that there is something in us that still feels it has been rebuffed, Ernest Holmes. In the flow of love, you will tend to see 
and respond to the divinity in all persons. Eric Butterworth. Deep listening is the kind of listening that can help relieve the suffering of the other person. You can call it compassionate listening, Thich Nhat Hanh. And so it is. And enjoy our very own Dan, Doug Van Wilkham. Good morning, everyone. I wonder if you would agree with me that in many societies and cultures, ours included, we as children, as individuals growing up, are not generally encouraged to see our own inherent worthiness, not empowered to recognize our own unique value and goodness that we bring into this life and can contribute to the world. Self love is hard to experience when it hasn't been modeled. Offering love unguarded to those around us can be overwhelming if we haven't witnessed it. But without both of these things in some measure, being practiced in our lives, we are left alone, disconnected and unchanged. My poem this morning is a love poem. It is my attempt to change the story I've grown up with, and perhaps you've grown up with too. I offer it to the close, important people in my life, and I offer it to all of you listening now, and yes, even to myself. I use the word beauty in the poem to enfold all the words and phrases that are available to us to describe our inherent goodness. If that word makes you uncomfortable, please choose, find what, choose, please choose one that works well for you. My poem is called, Do You Know Your Own Beauty? I'll share it twice. Do you know your own beauty? I'm not speaking here of a beauty that is held up next to others and measured, not the kind of beauty that is found in certain curves of body or muscle or face, no. What I mean is, do you know your own true beauty, a beauty that is lived as your whole life? What I'm speaking of here is a beauty that is yours alone in all the world, that takes great pleasure in the differences we each carry. I mean, are you aware of your own beauty that can go before you, clearing the way for others, who, if fortunate and attentive enough, can see how goodness and joy should look upon the face, and when carried openly in the body, is meant to be seen. I mean your beauty, that is your own special love of living, that is your own going forward into this world with a full, open, and honest heart, that sees possibilities instead of sorrow, sees balance and harmony and grace standing true before any condition or appearance. Do you see, as I see, your confidence in the generousness of others, of me, of this great life, of God? Do you know how beautiful you are? Please come close and listen. I will tell you and once more, because I don't think we can ever hear it enough. Do you know your own beauty? I'm not speaking here of a beauty that is held up next to others and measured, not the kind of beauty that is found in the certain curve of body or muscle or face, no. What I mean is, do you know your own true beauty? a beauty that is lived as your whole life. What I'm speaking of here is a beauty that is yours alone in all the world, that takes great pleasure in the differences we each carry. Are you aware of your own beauty that can go before you, clearing the way for others who, if fortunate and attentive enough, can see how goodness and joy 
should look upon the face, and when carried openly in the body, is meant to be seen? I mean your beauty, that is your own special love of living, that is your own going forward into this world with a full, open, and honest heart, that sees possibilities instead of sorrow, sees balance and harmony and grace, standing true before any condition or appearance. Do you see, as I see, your confidence in the generousness of others, of me, of this great life, of God? Do you know how beautiful you are? Please come close and listen. I will tell you. <clears throat> what a lovely poem. Thank you, Doug. I'm looking at all of your faces. I'm hearing those words. Do you know how beautiful you are? Do you know how loved you are? Do you know how valuable you are? Do you know how wonderful you are? Listen closely and let me tell you. This is just one of the messages that we deliver to our community every Sunday morning. And I'm so glad you're able to join us this morning. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, so glad you're taking advantage of technology to join us whenever you can. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I am the Reverend Patricia Van Workham. I've been a Signs of Mind minister for probably close to 20 years and have been ordained for about three years now. Um, I serve as the education director for the Sacramento Center for CSL, as well as their associate minister. And I am delighted to be with you this morning. Our theme for October <coughs> is going further together. And this week's topic is we is greater than me. Now the idea of the collective we being greater than the individual I um, is really at odds with the uh, American vision of the rugged individual who's out there you know, to, to conquer the world all by themselves, you know, self-sufficient. And we seem to worship that as a culture. But the truth is that the we versus me dichotomy is a false argument. It's not that one is better than the other or that one is somehow at odds with the other, that if we trust the community that we're not a strong individual. It's not that way at all. It really is a both and situation. The truth is that there's a sympathetic and synergistic relationship between the community, between the we and me, between the collective and the individual. And that relationship is what I would really want to explore today. So I hope you enjoy the journey with me. There's an African proverb that is probably echoed in every indigenous culture that says, alone, I go faster. Together, we go further. Again, alone, I go faster. Together, we go further. And intuitively, this feels right and probably matches our experience. Sometimes there is a true need to get there quickly and to do it alone, because alone really is a lot quicker. <laughs> Committees take time, <laughs> okay? Even just pairs. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> And what time do you think you'll be ready to leave? I mean, I mean, that's a conversation that happens in my household a lot. And I'm never the one 
waiting to find out when Doug's going to be ready. He's always waiting to find out when I'm going to be ready to leave. Okay. And if you're like me, sometimes I just bolt out the door without thinking. I leap on an idea. I leap on something I need to do. And I don't think of options. I don't think of easier ways of doing things. But when we go together, we're working on a, a more collaborative model and we can build on the successes of, that we've already had. You know that phrase that we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us? Well, we can do that and we do it. And we can add both to their successes and learn from their mistakes. When we go together, when we work collaborative, we are resource rich, rich in ideas and talents and experiences and skills. We become broader and deeper. I'm generally pretty good at seeing the challenges and the problems in a project that's before me. Listening to it, something comes up and says, oh, that's not going to work or, oh, that's going to be a problem we're gonna to have to deal with. And like I said, I, I was raised to be critical and analytical. So I'm pretty good at poking holes at things. I need help finding solutions, finding alternative ways of seeing things, ways of meeting those perceived challenges. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Anybody out there like me? <laughs> oh yeah, I figured. So together, pooling our resources, we can become, and I love this phrase, the tide that lifts all boats so that more of us get to the destination and it can be a better destination than I originally envisioned. Collaboration works when each individual comes to the table with developed skills and talents, and when the group allows for and recognizes and values a diverse range of talents and skills. How many of you in the work world have been part of a team that was a team in name only, that the leader really just kind of barreled along and drug you with them with all the right language. <laughs> but they really didn't care what you had to say or what was going on. And they didn't really hear your ideas, okay? All of this world of team building and shared leadership, it's pretty common in the business world, okay? But what does it have to do with spiritual growth? Plenty. The dynamic of we and me, me, myself, and I, in spiritual growth <coughs> is truly a spiral journey or a double helix like DNA in that we grow spiritually both in our meanness and our we-ness. And we have to keep them in pace with each other, the me and the we my sense of we has to have to stay in balance. Um, otherwise, you know what happens when you get out of balance, things get wonky and you fall off one way or the other. So as an individual, I must be focused on my personal spiritual growth because no one can do it for me, okay? I need to discover the spiritual practices that work for me and I actually have to practice them on at least somewhat regular basis. I need to observe and become conscious of my thoughts and behaviors and then examine them to see if they still work for me. I've got one I'm working on right now. It's the, oh, I can do that later. I've got plenty of time. I can do that later. Have you noticed? that when you really don't want to do whatever that is, later never comes. <laughs> so 
So how's that working for you? It doesn't work well for me. So I'm working on that one. Okay. I need to be responsible for my actions and my speech. I may not make you feel one way or the other. Your feelings are your own business and your own choices. But the words I say to people, the weight I give them, the tone, am I being kind? <laughs> they have meaning, they have value, they have impact. So I need to be responsible for my actions and my speech. And I need to study and I need to read and I need to engage in deep con thinking conversations to expand my capacity to be intellectually and emotionally flexible. That automatic no that comes up with new ideas or that automatic old emotional reaction that comes up does not serve me well. And that's part of my spiritual growth. And I have to say that one of the reasons I've been married to the same man for nigh on to 36 years now is because one of the primary commitments that we had when we got married was to our own spiritual growth. We knew that the we-ness wasn't going to work <laughs> unless we paid attention to the meanness of each of ourselves. I had to keep growing. He had to keep growing in order for us to come together. And we had to be aware that we might not grow at the exact same speed and we might not be working on what the other person thought was the most important thing. We had to leave room for each other to develop the me in order to come together as a greater we. Okay, so I love to teach. That's actually why I became an ordained minister, was to teach. And a couple of weeks ago in class, we came across uh, some lines in the Science of Mind textbook by our founder, Ernest Holmes. And it went, the will of God is always toward that which expresses life and happiness. To suppose that the will of God could be in opposition to the advancement of our lives would be to think of spirit as being self-destructive. It is always seeking self-expression through us and will never deny us anything. I saw light bulbs going off in people and the overwhelming response was, so why wasn't I told this before? It's a mind altering and heart opening realization that God, that spirit, that the universe, the thing itself, as Holmes calls it, exists to advance our lives, to advance my life. And its will is always toward my life and happiness. How many of us heard that? How many of us saw that or knew about that experience growing up? Doug's poem this morning spoke of this yearning in each of us to know that we are beautiful, that I am worthy and valuable. I am good and I am loved. This is the power of personal spiritual growth, to know that the universe is here. The will of God is for my happiness, my joy, the advancement of my life. So that's one arm, the double helix. Let's go to the second one. The Zulu people of South Africa have a life philosophy. Isn't that a lovely phrase? A life philosophy known as Ubuntu. Its meaning can be summed up in the phrase, I am because we are. This is a strong statement of community. I am because we 
are. There are two practices that I want to highlight that belong to Ubuntu. The first is their greeting. And I'm not going to give you the actual words because they're in Zulu and I don't say or pronounce Zulu very well, which includes clicking. And trust me, if I can't get the guttural German G out, I sure can't get the click of the Zulu language out. So just know that both of these are single words that respond to each other, but the translation tends to be a phrase, okay? So they're greeting. The first, the greeter, the first person says, I see you. And the response is, I exist. And that can be translated, the greeting to, we see you. And the response is, I exist. And the we that is being expressed is the greeter, the greeter's family, the greeter's friends, the greeter's community. All that they represent. We see you, the person standing in front of me. And the response is, I exist. Okay, remember the I am because we are. This is reinforced with their greeting. It reflects the values of being seen by a community. Now, this goes very deep, very quickly. I know who I am because of the reflection I see of myself in the world in you. Let me say that again. I know who I am because of the reflection I see of myself in the world, which means in you too. We teach this, signs of mind, when we talk about the law of cause and effect, action and reaction belief and manifestation. Life is a reflection of my beliefs. Therefore, what I see is a reflection of me. You are a reflection of me. But at a grounded human level, you do reflect what I see, what you, you are a reflection of me. It even comes up in, in really simple ways. Remember the kids game, Marco Polo? Marco, Polo, Marco, Polo. I know who and where I am in relation to who and where you are. Call and response. Adults who are not seen for who they are, go from loneliness to depression to despair. Children and teens who are not seen for who they are and who do not have their needs met by their community, they're not seen by their community or their family, they start acting out with increasing volume and drama. Okay, that's probably the number one message a teenager has, which is see me. I may change my identity from week to week, but by George, I want to be seen for whatever identity I think I have this week. Okay, know me. I exist. See me. Know me. One of the unfortunate and significant outcomes of early maternal illness and or addiction is that we have a raft of very young children who do not form strong connections with adults. They're diagnosed as the unbonded children and they are presumed to be, and that is presumed to be the cause of sociopaths or what we call sociopaths and psychopaths those people who have no connection to humanity. They don't have compassion, they don't have empathy. That's how critical being seen 
by the other, by the community, is to human beings. We truly do not live alone. I need to be seen for who I truly am, not just who you think I am. And that harkens back to the Thich Nhat Hanh quote at the beginning about deep listening. It's how we learn who people are, is we listen deeply to know who they really are so that we can see them for who they are. Even deeper, we teach that the world of form exists because God wants to know itself. And the only way that can happen is if the formless takes on form in order to experience itself. There has to be a subject and an object. So God created the world and humans and hum all life, not just humans, but humans appear to be the closest approximation, the most complete expression of God. Now, granted, God's infinite and we're not. So it's always going to be a limited expression, but this is close. And we're told that we are created in the image and likeness of the one life that exists in, through, and as all life and all form. We are the result of the self-contemplation of God, the result of God knowing itself by means of us. God sees us and we exist, okay? That's the power, God sees us and we exist. I see you and you exist. And if I truly see you, you exist for me as a real live individualized activity of God. And you are seen and recognized and you know how beautiful and wonderful and loved you are just for who you are. Okay. The Ubuntu. I know who I am because of the reflection I see of myself in the world I know I exist because you see me. Science of mind. Your life is a reflection of who you think you are, your beliefs, your expectations. Do you know, do you believe that you exist to reflect the beauty of God, the love of God, the wisdom and intelligence of God? They're good questions to think about this week. Second, Ubuntu practice. Do you know how a Zulu family, and then later when the child becomes an adult, the community that lives the Ubuntu philosophy deals with a member's misbehavior? Because all of us misbehave, okay? We grow into ourselves. We are not born full-blown with awareness of all of our skills and gifts and our wonderfulness. We have to learn, okay? They don't punish. There's no time out in a Zulu family for a child that's acting out. The community gathers together and they put the misbehaving person in the center and everyone goes around and tells them tells the misbehaving person how wonderful they are, what skills they have, what gifts they bring, what they remember of the good things that they have done, how talented they are, what a gift they are to the community, how loved they are, how appreciated they are, how their value to the community, to the individuals in the community, how that's seen. 
and it's recognized. Now, how's that for motivating someone to live up to their potential? I don't know about you, but my parents thought criticism, telling me how I could do better, was a way of motivating me. Trust me, it was not motivating. <laughs> this would have been motivating to be told how wonderful I was. Wouldn't you love to have gotten that as a child growing up? Do you know that you can do that to yourself right now? <laughs> the next time you do something that you hear yourself saying, oh, stupid, why did you do that? Why did you say that? How could you think that? Stop and be your own Ubuntu community. Sit yourself down and tell yourself, wait a minute, yeah, maybe that could have been done better, but look at all that I have done and that I can do. Look how much more there is to me than that one small action. Can you see how also that practice would support and appreciate true diversity, true individuality in those around us. I heard the most wonderful definition of love the other day. It was the non-possessive delight in a person's individuality. No attempt to change or shape, just delight. then diversity becomes not a matter of outer circumstances, not a matter of gender or color or culture or sexual identity, none of those, religion. It becomes an appreciation that each one of us is completely uniquely ourselves. I began this talk with a statement that there's a, or can be a synergistic relationship, a sympathetic relationship between the we and the me, between the collective and, in the, and the individual. Now, when it works correctly, then the self-development I do individually the more I develop the individual and completely unique that I gifts that I have. And all of us came here with gifts to uncover and grow. Then the more I have to add to the collective, to the community, the collaboration between you and me, the stronger the me is, then the stronger the we is, the stronger the community is. The more strong the individuals that can collaborate in the community, the more flexible and adaptable the community is to the changes in our environment. And the more we can help each other adjust to the changes in our environment whether that be the physical environment or the growth and changes in our own ideas and perceptions, because there will always, always be change and growth. It's called evolution <laughs> or the unfoldment of the divine in the world. <laughs> Call it what you want, change is change. Ernest Holmes said that this teaching, Signs of Mind, is open at the top. He meant that there is no final reveal, no final revelation of truth. The divine is infinite. So what makes me think that everything will reach some point and then just stay the same? 
okay? Doesn't matter how good it is. It's never, doesn't matter how bad it is, it's never going to stay. It's always going to change and grow. And the stronger the me is, the stronger my co community is, the more we have flexibility and options to respond to the changes. So the synergy of me and we, the spiral of growth, is how our lives advance and express ever-growing amounts of life and happiness to bring us back to Holmes's world. And by keeping this two-track or double helix of growth moving, we also gain a sense of the divine, of God, that is both personal to us and universal. That, however, is the beginning of an entirely new talk. So I'm going to stop <laughs> right here and let's move into prayer. So right now, in this moment, there is only the will of God moving life in joy and in happiness. There is that creator which created all, loves, supports, and sustains all. And it is that love and support that I feel and know in my life right now. It's in every cell of my body. Uncovering and remembering the original pattern of perfection, of vibrant health. Science tells us that we, re we replace every cell in our body within seven years. Right now, every cell in my body is replicating according to the original pattern of perfection. I am remembering wholeness and health. My mind is open and flexible to the flow of the love and intelligence and wisdom of spirit. I let new ideas move and awaken in me the intelligence and the wisdom that have always resided in me. And that flow of love moves into the world in reciprocity. I send love out and it comes back. It's rich in my relationships. That flow of love, like breath in and out. There's love moving in my relationships. There's love and abundance moving <clears throat> in the world of business, of money, of creativity. It's this wonderful flow, this give and take. This is my life right now. And it is the life for anybody who hears my voice, who feels this inside them to claim for what is true for one is true for all. I know this. And I know the ability to claim what is known as mine. And so I put this treatment into the law of mind, knowing that the law always says yes. And so I give thanks for answered prayer. And so it is.
And I want to thank Ruth for the next musical uh, piece. This is one of my all time favorites. Please enjoy Denise Rossiter. Love is alive in the space between us. Feel that love right now. God speaks out in the words between us. Hear those words right now. too caught up in the music. <laughs> ah, this is our offering time. So we are offering you an opportunity to give. And we have received. Um, if you were present for this talk, for our music, for our poetry, we have received. I feel full. Um, and so we can offer through PayPal or Square, which we can find on 
saccsl.org, which is Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. We can mail a personal check to our address that is shown on the screen. We can also shop our Christmas time with Amazon Smile, and we can have Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living uh, that will get a portion of that. So we can double smile as we give our Christmas shopping, our birthday, whatever it is. And we also want to thank our YouTube audience for all of their donations also. Uh, thank you. So let's stay muted as we say together our abundance affirmation. Abiding by the law of circulation and in heartfelt gratitude, I affirm that I live in a creative and abundant universe that continuously flows in, through, and out as me, expressing as the ever-expanding infinite good, and so it is. You can send our prayer requests through our website at saccsl.org, which is, again, Sacramento Center for Spiritual Living. And I'm back for our announcements. <laughs> Usually, Busy Hands and Warm Hearts meets the second and fourth Monday of the month. And this really is, I love the phrase that, that Reverend Sharon came up about us, knitting ourselves into community. It really is that space to see each other with love. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be <laughs> on the fourth uh, Monday of this month. And I wanna make the announcement that that's not going to be happening because both Doug and I will be out of town, sorry guys. However, the, the task that we took on, I'd like to share with everyone the Social Outreach Committee is going to be collecting things for youth that do not have homes. Um, and we as a group, the Busy Hands Warm Hearts, have decided that we will crochet or knit or whatever we do, uh, scarves, uh, nice warm scarves that we can give kids that have um, our love and prayers knit into them, our community love worked into them. So work on your scarf, <laughs> whether we meet or not, and I'll see you the second Wednesday, or I'm sorry, second Monday of December. We do have a board of trustees meeting. It is on Zoom. It is open to all, uh, particularly all of our members, and it's the same Zoom number we do on Sundays. So it's after service next week from 1230 to 3. And we're not a scary group. We're actually one of the nicest boards I've ever served on. Everybody seems to get along really well and be focused on our growth and uh, the love that we hold for each other and how to grow that into the world. So come join us. And as we've said before, find us on Meetup, Facebook and Instagram. Check out our website. It's got everything you need, especially if you're on YouTube because that way you can find out what classes that you can attend from distance. And there we go with our YouTube <laughs> channel. You can access the channel from our website and you'll get to connect with all of the Sunday services that we've been doing the last couple of months. Um, catch up on whatever you missed. So now I turn this over. Good question. To Yes. Second a Monday in November, right? Yes, I said December, didn't I? Whoops. Yeah. Yes. The, first, the second Monday of November, I'll be here. Okay, so now we'll give it back to Margie for our closing. Okay, and here's our affirmation for the week to take with you. It's our special gift. And say it with me, mute it, as we go and grow to get further together, the world brightens. And for sure, for sure. And, and in gratitude for the service today 
and for all of you and all of us participating in this sacred, sacred time. And we bless the service, we give thanks, and we know that we, we grow and go further together. And we know and we say that God sees us and we exist. And so it is. And enjoy our closing song and stay for fellowship. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>